I know that video really set our conversation up nicely, but I thought maybe we could go back a little bit. All right. Uh, even further back, maybe than the video. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about where you first kind of discovered your passion for interiors? Was there like an ooh moment, design or architecture wise? Um, yes. Okay. Well, I think when I first started realizing that interior design was kind of my path. Uh, I was actually pretty young. I was, um, I think the first indication was that whenever my parents would leave the house, anything that I didn't like would disappear and they would come back. And then I was interrogated as to where these things <laughs> sort of disappeared to. So that was kind of an indication for my parents that definitely I was very interested in my surroundings and had a, a, an opinion, very strong opinion about them. Uh, I, but I would think when I, what really, when I really started, I was about fifth grade, um, I started, uh, I was designing a house, and I drew on my desk, which was something you were not supposed to do, and I, we had a substitute teacher, and she, um, it ended up that when my, my, my actual teacher came back, I got in trouble, but I noticed that they took a photograph of me with the principal next to it, so I knew even though it was bad that it was kind of like a good thing, and that it was kind of leading me in a direction, and I started designing houses uh, with another girl in my class, um, and we actually, went and, and sat with an architect that uh, lived in our neighborhood, okay. went to his office and looked at his drawings. So that was kind of like the beginning of it. So I really started out thinking architecture, residential architecture at a young age was kind of something I was very interested in. And it sort of led into um, interior design once I was looking at architecture programs and <laughs> they told me that my math skills were not very good. <laughs> math, it's the worst. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But no, so that's where it really started. Then when I was in college, um, I studied interior design and um, I ended up working with Parrish Hadley as an internship in New York City, which is a, a great old firm in, in New York, actually where Mark Hampton, Alexa's dad started. And, um, and a really amazing firm, uh, Albert Hadley I, I interviewed me and I was very, really excited about the opportunity and it, it worked out. And, um, and I was there for a, for a summer, and then they hired me out of college. And I worked with them right out of school, which was really an amazing opportunity. Um, and then from there, I went to Robert Metzger, then Jeffrey Bill Huber, and then I opened my own company. But so I really was, it was always kind of going down that path of um, design, architecture, interiors uh, from a pretty young age. And my dad always, refers to it as the, you know, when, when I was hiding all of the things I didn't like in the house. <laughs> and he said, oh, because you were a pain in the ass from the beginning. <laughs> but creative. They, they're very supportive of my create, my uh, sort of, you know, the process. They were 100% behind, um, you know, what I wanted to do and my interests and kind of helping guide me into that. So it was great. Amazing. Well, we're all luckier for that nurturing well, thank spirit. You. <laughs> uh, what's influenced your design aesthetic? Um, you know, I, I you know I think that interestingly, I think you know as designers and certainly in design school, you know, um, and, and at events like this, we're seeing product from all over the world. We're being influenced by you know companies and and designers, you know, both um, uh, established and and young designers at the North End, which is really cool, the North Studio. Um, and I think that that's something that um, I, I find inspiration almost everywhere I go, um, and. Travel is certainly a part of it, but I would tell you that most of my inspiration, I think, just really comes from connecting with people and talking to them and really understanding, um, you know, what's important and to people and sort of where 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 their heads are at. And, and I find that, um, you know, I, I have a showroom at High Point, and I'm there every six months, and I really enjoy talking to all the buyers and interior designers and um, and store owners that come in and and look at the product and I, I find out what's going on in every pocket. LT Home here is uh, that sells a lot of our product and they're a great gauge to sort of what's happening and over the years it's really interesting to hear about all of the exciting, sometimes not exciting things that are going on in everyone's different community. But um, for me that's really important. Whenever I'm traveling, I tend to, I really like to connect with people, talk to them, and, 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 and I'm inspire, inspired by, you know, sort of that, that information and, and that knowledge of, of, you know, sort of where, where people are, where their heads are at at that moment. 
And where are some of your favorite places to travel to get inspired? I mean, for, well, I, Toronto is a great city, and I love Toronto, and I was actually He's just saying... He's not just saying that. He said I, it's no, New York and I really, I was too. just saying, you know, it's amazing that it's so close to New York, and when you're here, it's so, it feels like you're, you know, m so much further away. I mean, it's just, it's an amazing community, and uh, it's really design uh, savvy, and the restaurants are great, and it's just very, it's, it, it's, it's, um, it is in my, it, my uh, knowing Toronto has changed so much over the last 15 or 20 years and um, and it's growing so rapidly it's amazing but um, but I would say that you know places that I love to vacation I mean I love I've been to the Maldives and I love that and it was really beautiful and um, I love um, you know I love going of course you know loved going to Paris and London and um, Rome and um, but you know I find that 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 is, you know, that there really is inspiration everywhere. Um, and I find that you really just, if you're open to it, if you open yourself and you, you really connect with the environment you're in, um, with the people that are there, I think you just you take so much away from, uh, from those experiences. And um, I, I don't know, it's interesting, even just um, this, this event, I, I've met about three or four um, new vendors that I'm really excited about. Um, one, in, one is right over here that is actually doing, um, oh no, right over, wait, over there, that's doing uh, woodwork mm -hmm. and really amazing, really amazing stuff. And I'm actually doing a Japanese restaurant and I just thought this would be the perfect person to collaborate with mm -hmm. in terms of um, their, the, sort of their, um, their capacity of what they do and also the, the products that they work with and the way that they work with them and that they're sustainable and it just really, f it, it was just a really great thing. So there was so much, in the short, you know, 10 minute conversation I had with them, there was so much that came out of that for me. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, I was telling, you know, I was saying, when I, when I was first coming here, uh, the night of the party, which was a lot of fun, by the way, and um, I, they were trying to bring me through the space and I kept, you know, saying, oh, hey, hold on, I'll right back, and I would go talk to somebody, and then I'd go to another booth, and I, w you know, I was really interested, and I just said, you know, for me, this is really, I'm, I'm, I'm sincerely interested in this, you know, what's going on here, I'm finding the things that I don't know about yet, and that are here, and that are regional, or something that, that we don't have, you know, I know Bosch, and I know Miele, and I love them, and I think they're amazing uh, products, and I use them, but there are things that, and, and it's interesting to see some of the new things that they're coming out with, but there's a lot of things here that I've never seen before right. and, and people that I've never worked with before and that I'm interested in. So for me, I, leaving here um, with new, you know, sort of uh, people to collaborate with is really important to me. And it just keeps widening your aperture as a designer and opens you up to sort of new experiences, new ideas, um, a new point of view. And, um, and that's... That's really, I mean, I, I feel that you can, you know, it, I, if you're open to sort of new ideas and you're out there and you're interested and you're, you're sort of, you know, you're, you're giving information and, and, and it, open to new information yourself, right. I just think it really, it's amazing what you can get out of that experience. Definitely, definitely. And I'm glad you're enjoying the show. I think there's a lot of really interesting stuff happening. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm also enjoying the bars, I have to admit. There's a great <laughs> drink downstairs <laughs> that has gold in it. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I told the bartender, I said, you know, I'm just not eating enough gold these days. <laughs> <laughs> Who is, really? <laughs> <laughs> so you're talking a bit about collaboration. Can you talk a little bit about um, your environment with the teams that you work with and sort of how... Uh, a space comes together and, and do you prefer to be hands-on, hands-off? Is there an ebb and flow with people? Yes. Well, I always tell my officer, I'm, I'm very involved in everything and I try to be, I'm always like, okay, I want to be as involved as I need to be and I, and I really want to be involved, but I don't want to slow things down. I want to keep things moving forward. So, um, you know, and, and there's a variety of different things. We're doing commercial design. We're doing hotel. We're doing a hotel, two hotels right now, one in Turks and Caicos, one in Mexico. Uh, we're doing a residential, uh, commercial-wise, we're doing a residential building, we're doing a restaurant. We're actually doing two restaurants right now. So, th so that team I'm working with, and uh, you know, I'm working with them on a variety of different things. Elevations, you know, bar design or, or um, layouts for spaces, and 
um, and then we're selecting lighting and different things. So I'm working with them almost at every level, but I kind of, I work with them and then I'm out, and then I work with them and then I'm out. And the same thing with the residential designers. I go to a lot of the meetings, uh, meet with the clients that, that we're doing. Right now we're doing about uh, 18 houses, about. Mm -hmm. And um, from Sydney to LA to Denver, New York, uh, Florida, uh, in, in not Canada yet, which I would love to do. Um, and and so I, you know, it's um, I, I'm very involved. I really am, and I'm very hands-on, and I really enjoy and love what I do. So I really want to be a part of it. But I also really enjoy working with, um, you know, the, w with the other designers in my office, and 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 listening to their ideas, and we really collaborate. It's a right. very open environment. Excellent, excellent. Can you talk a little bit about the challenges? in the difference between working in a hotel space, for example, and a residential space, aside from obviously, you know, traffic. You know, I, I mean, I think that, um, I think that there's not, I, I don't see it as being so different. I mean, I think that it's the same, you, you have to apply a lot of the things that you understand as a designer um, that you know from doing, you know, a family kitchen to doing uh, an open kitchen in a restaurant. And you're just using the same concepts and ideas, but you're translating it from sort of the uh, sort of the uh, you know sort of the residential experience to commercial. So I, I find that it's it, it it works really well. I think the synergy is great. I think that what you know as a as a residential designer, what you can bring to um, the commercial space is really amazing. And I think it's it makes it feel a lot more inviting and a lot more exciting and interesting, um, and vice versa. So I I think that they they both complement each other really well. Right. Right. Um, how would you describe your aesthetic and what sort of turns you on in terms of good design? Um, I would say my aesthetic is, and I think that's a really, I mean, I, I'm sure a lot of designers would agree that's a kind of a complicated question, but I would say my personal aesthetic is that I love things that are very stylish and sophisticated and at the same time very uh, down to earth and friendly. Um, so I like that balance. Um, I like when um, I like when uh, spaces really invite people in and 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 make people want to be a part of it. Um, but at the same time, I also like that it takes you a, a, on a journey and it's a little bit outside of the box. Um, and I think that it's not just about creating spaces that are visually impactful. It's about making sure that they are really. Um, you know that they're they're real spaces that you can actually live in, work with, enjoy. Your dogs can sit on the sofas. I I, I like spaces that feel alive and livable, as well as stylish and sophisticated. I don't. I'm not. A, I'm not into the uh, sort of design for the sake of design. Right. Right. And I think something that Alexa said actually in our paper was really interesting um, that she finds the biggest challenge that she encounters with clients is that they don't trust themselves enough to, to feel positive about their instincts and right. that they don't trust themselves right. enough to go with what they like. Right. How, what do you think about that? And I, you know, I always say, that I've, been, I've been asked, it's like, what is the, you know, the biggest mistake in an interior design project from a client perspective? And I said, it's really not trusting your instincts. And, um, and if, you know, I, I find that, you know, they'll, you'll love a color, you love a pattern, but you're afraid to use it, you know, and I, there's a way to make it work. It may not be as the wall covering or may not be as a sofa fabric. It may not be that big of an impact, but there's a way to bring it in. There's a way to use it. Um, and there's value in understanding what it is that inspires you. So if a client tells me that there's something that they think is really crazy and they would never, ever want to incorporate it, but it's something that they really love, I always say, well, wait, hang on, tell me what that is, let's talk about it, because there's some information there and something that we can bring to the table in the design. Right, right. Have you ever encountered a, a design faux pas that your client was really adamant about going for that you had to talk them down from, or do you think there's a solution to every problem? Um, I, you know, I don't know if I've had that. I mean, I think that, I think, I, you know, I've been asked by clients to do things that, um, I didn't think were a good idea and I've encouraged them not to do or that I've guided them or I've come up with a solution that maybe is in that, it, that fits that you know, inspiration but it maybe takes it into a, a slightly different, more livable or more, or more um, I don't know if tasteful is the right word or 
what it, but somehow it works with it. You know, sometimes, I think sometimes understanding context and location and lifestyle is something that, you know, that, that you maybe look at it that way as a designer. Sometimes I think people are saying, oh, I love that, but, you know, does it work in my city apartment? Maybe not. Or my, my country house or my beach house or my lake house or ski house or wherever, wherever they're, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're thinking. But, you know, I think that that's what, that's what designers, you know, bring to the table. I think, you know, I've been asked so many times, like, what do designers, like, you know, now that all of this product is available to everybody and we all know about it, you know, I said, well, you know, it used to be that designers were, they kind of had the sort of the golden key and they had w of all the information and they really were the gatekeepers of a lot of this information. And I said, and that's what I think in some ways, maybe what designers put their sort of staked their value on. I think today design is really seen in a different way because we're selling intellectual property and it's really more about tapping into our ideas and um, our experiences and our knowledge of product and working with, um, you know, working with um, upholsters and curtain makers and really having those experiences to understand that. So I think today it's, it's kind of twi it's, it's switched a little bit. Right. And do you think that amount of knowledge that people have now, has that made it more of a challenge or um, I how would is the say no, change? I don't think it's made it more of a challenge. I just think it's, you know, I think having, um, I think now that the homeowner or the, the, the clients or that, you know, the hoteliers or whoever you're working with, they have more knowledge. So what it really does is it, it puts the onus on us as designers to really, you know, to kind of just be that much more knowledgeable about what we do and present it in a more professional way and, and really, you know, approach it from a more, you know, it's a more of a business transaction at a certain level. It's not quite as, um, it's, it, the business has changed. It was funny, um, Alexa and I were talking about that because she was talking about like her dad and when he was working and how the business has changed so much in, in you know, when she was, from when she was very young to now as owning, owning the, you know, or her business and, and sort of thinking about you know, how much it's changed. And I said, you know, it's, it's amazing because it really has become much more um, of a, it's just sort of a recognized as a, a real sort of serious profession. And I mean, and I think everyone being here, everyone, you know, this, this um, you know, the interior design show, I think these are all very good examples of how interested we all are in all of these amazing products and all of these great ideas and, and also lifestyle and sort of living with the products. And I don't know, to me, I just think that, um, you know, it, it's, it's very different when you turn on television and, you know, six of the shows that you want to watch, three of them are about design or real estate or, so we're all, we're, we're just, you know, we're, the things that we're interested in are, we're interested in are actually available to us, the information. So I think that, you know, it does change the dialogue, but I don't think it, it makes it better or worse. I just think that it's just kind of evolving and growing. Right. And why do you think there is this advanced interest in, in, in living spaces and improving and tweaking and <laughs> having fun with living spaces? Well, I, would, I mean, I think that it is, I, I, I think it's because we really, um, I think we're all we're moving at 100 miles an hour, and I think that when we do have downtime, I think we really want to, you know, we want those that time to be, you know, really, um, you know, we just want it to be the best it can be. So I think that um, I think that that's one of the reasons that people are so interested in their home space. I think, but also I just think having the information available, and I think you know, the age of information and ha knowing about all of these ideas. It is amazing. It's interesting. I mean, it's it's incredible to see, you know, what's just, you know, what's happening with refrigeration. Okay, one of my favorite things that I've discovered uh, was the Miele, um, the new dishwasher where you just tap on it and it opens for you. So it's just like really, I mean, that's a it's an incredible idea, and um, and it will make, oh, you know, I mean, it sounds kind of, I mean, it sounds kind of crazy, but one of the things that we always struggle with is what kind of hardware we're going to put on the dishwasher that's right. been integrated into the kitchen so it doesn't look like a dishwasher, but you can open it. So it's kind of amazing that that's sort of the next generation of that product. And it clearly is coming out of, you know, um, the innovation of like sort of responding to that, to that issue. You know, I mean, you go through all this effort to design this kitchen where everything disappears 
and then you have to put hardware on it that clearly is not that's not a cabinet if the if the piece of hardware is that big. you know so it is interesting i'm sure that will make its way into refrigeration and everything else where you just touch it and it opens so it's kind of cool i mean um so i i just think that it, it's you know the being being at these events and and meeting with all the different people it's incredible what what you're what you're learning about i just can't imagine it wouldn't be interesting i mean i guess because i'm interested in it i think that but it seems like a lot of people are, so it's a good thing. <laughs> Definitely. Well, everybody here is, obviously. Um, you were talking a little bit about lifestyle, yep. and I know that in your book, you know, it's not just about creating a beautiful space. You're also, you know, talking about living in that space. Can you kind of talk a little bit about that? Yes. And, and the well, a- actually, my, my house is not very far from here. I mean, it's, it's just on the other side of Ontario Lake. I live... Um, on, I, I have a house outside of New York City. We're very far outside of New York City, on uh, at one of the Finger Lakes called Skinny Atlas, and um, and uh, I, you know, that house for me is very much about you know bringing people that you know friends of mine uh, from New York City up to the house and and having really fun, relaxed you know weekends. So part of it is also being able to just sort of live in the space and use it. And I want it to be beautiful. I want it to be stylish and contextually make sense to its surroundings and the architecture. But I also want it to and represent sort of my point of view and my lifestyle, the kind of per, you know my perception of living on a lake. Um, but um, but I you know I want it to be livable. I want my dogs to be able to be there. And I want it to be something that actually is not um, you know, it's not something, I always say, you know, you, the things that you surround yourself with, sh- you should be, that you should own your things, your things should not own you. So I think the idea that you're actually utilizing these pieces and living with them and dining with them and drinking with them, I guess. <laughs> um, but I think that uh, it's very, you know, I just think it's really important to, to um, you know, you, you, I always say, you know, but I was like, oh, you know, they'll bring their dog, you know, the dog's on the chair and say, oh, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, no, don't worry about it. It's, you know, it's like, it's here. That's what it's for. Right. I mean, it's, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of taking shoes off on a floor because I feel like maybe you didn't choose the right floor if you can't wear shoes on it. It feels like that's kind of what it's for. And that's my, that's the way that I, that's the way I live. I always, I feel like it's, I, the, the space is something that, it's, it's a backdrop. I mean, we design beautiful backdrops for people to live their lives, not for people to sort of just appreciate the rooms. Right. Do you think that's a misconception of great design, is that it's to be appreciated and not brought into the space? Well, I mean, I, I think that, you know, when I, when I talk to my parents and my grandparents, you know, I, I think that the way that homes were years ago, certainly in the U.S., was that you know there everyone had when when people did well they had these great houses and there were rooms that you never went in and or you only used once a year and there were things that you only used every once in a while and then sometimes you see these older houses where they have like a bar in the basement and there was like an area where they would watch television and it was like every, the whole family like lived in the basement <laughs> of this beautiful house and so i think today there's just a very different approach to design i think that we are very you know this generation is very much about you know, um, living with the things that they surround themselves with, and 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 being a part of that experience, and it's it's really about a quality of life, and it's really about, um, you know, it's really about, uh, I think, enjoying and a- appreciating, um, but enjoying the things that you have around you, and I think that that's you know I see that is more about the direction of, you know, going in that more so in that direction. Um, every year, it seems like that we are um, we're, we're we're just living with the things that we're excited about, as opposed to treating them like you know that they're so special that we're not we're we're just not worthy you know to to sort of be a part of it. Right. So I think that I think that's a really great way to um, a great way to live because I think you tend to surround yourself with things that are more you that you connect with more and that you feel more comfortable with. And I think that if you're buying, you know, really, you know, really you know, f- formal French furniture that you don't that you don't feel comfortable sitting on, I think that maybe that's not the right l- kind of aesthetic for you. Right. If 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 you're not if if it's not if it's not in, even making you 
you know, sort of want to be there. So I think that, I think that's a great direction for design in general. There's an honesty to it. There's a, there's a, you know, it just feels livable and smart to me. Right. Now, speaking of livable, on Queer Eye, you guys seem to be dealing a lot with uh, young okay. men and men in general who maybe were a little too comfortable yeah. and complacent in their spaces. Yes. Um, can you talk about your most memorable moments? Well, I mean, I, okay, so that was definitely at a time where, I mean, I think that, you know, that was, it was only 10 years ago that that, or 12 years ago that that show started, but it was really a different time. I mean, you know, there's so much has changed just, you know, in terms of, yeah, I don't think, I don't think, you know, that men are, are, are just finding out about hair products like at the, they Hopefully. were at that time or, you know, there was definitely some sketchy home situations going on and they were all really legit which is, you know, people were always surprised. They, oh, well, you guys must have, like, you know, uh, you made that happen. And I was like, no, no, it was, it was totally, that was the real deal. But the thing is, is that um, I would say, you know, w there, was, there was one house in particular. There was a guy that lived in Brooklyn, and his house was so, it was, he was like a hoarder. And it was like three rooms, three small rooms, like a bedroom, like a sitting room, and like another room, I don't even know what it was. But there was so much stuff in the room that you couldn't really see it. And it had, I don't think it ever had been vacuumed or cleaned at any level in any way, shape, or form. And he lived there for about three years, and he just collected all this, like, just stuff. And it was, I, I don't even, I don't have, I don't have, I do not have asthma. But I had an asthma attack in the apartment, and they had to put me on an oxygen thing, the tank. Well, they had to get a tank, and... An, a an ambulance had to come, but I was literally having, I guess it was, I was just, my body just could not handle the amount of, like, dust and dust mites and dirt and everything that was in the air, and a few of us got really sick while we were filming, so that was pretty amazing because he was a great guy, but I just said, dude, what are you doing? I mean, like, seriously, like, your house is so dirty that I have asthma, and I don't have asthma. Like, that's a really bad sign. So, I mean, but yeah, there were some really, really crazy um, moments like that. Um, and, and, and I think some of it translated on to camera, but, you know, we never really wanted it to be a show that was really negative or mean to right. the guy. So we really, we kind of, we would never say that on television. Today, they would probably make us say that on television. But at the time, it was a little bit friendlier, you know, kind of uh, format. So, um, you know, it was... But it was really, yeah, there were some really not good situations. Interesting, interesting. And f on the opposite end of the spectrum, can you talk about maybe one project that you did that you just felt was so amazing and the whole process really inspired you? Um, yeah, I would say, okay, I would say one of the most amazing pro projects, or in, in most interesting certainly, was that um, I was hired, I was asked to do the World's Fair in uh, Aichi, Japan. And, um, and I represented the US, which was kind of an amazing thing to be asked to do. Um, and I had to design kind of a VIP, like 4,000 square foot space that was where uh, dignitaries and other people traveling from around the world would go and you know, sort, of, you know, sort of check their emails and relax or have lunch or drink or something. So it was really interesting to design a space that uh, for that group in particular and also in Japan, but also um, also in designing it in a way where it was kind of the American aesthetic and sort of, you know, what I sort of, sort of my take on sort of what was traditionally American and, cl you know, sort of historically American, but also making it feel fresh and modern and then sort of fit into sort of the concept of the World's Fair. So that was a really interesting, I thought that was a really interesting commission and it was a lot of fun. And interestingly, I'm now um, talking to that group again about doing a project, another a sort of a historical project in, um, in Pennsylvania uh, that's also kind of uh, that whole group that, that I worked with okay. that brought me into uh, the World's Fair. So yeah, that was a really, that's probably the most outside of the box, you know, sort of request that I've had. Right. Very cool, very and cool. And it was very funny to work in Japan also because I found out the words the word hi means yes, I understand, and also um, yes. So that can be very confusing when you're asking somebody, have you finished doing that? Hi. 
And you're like, okay, but it could mean either yes, I understand, or yes. So it was confusing. Yeah. <laughs> there, was a, there was a lot of stuff last minute that I was like, I'm assuming that meant you understood, <laughs> and then it wasn't completed. <laughs> but yeah, so it was, but it was really amazing experience. Right. Excellent, excellent. How would you describe your ideal client? Oh my God. that you know I, I think being able to support great design both um, from you know just a personality standpoint a financial standpoint but also you know just having that sense of will, willing to take a risk and be adventurous and um, and I think is really really important because uh, and trust I think that right. someone who has who's who's trusting and has trust I think that's really important as well right what sort of advice would you give to someone sitting here, for example, who is maybe interested in switching up their interior? <laughs> I would say, um, okay, my phone number is 212-736-6454. No, I was kidding. Where I would say, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, my advice is, I would say, you know, really be thoughtful about what you're doing. I mean, really think about it and be honest with yourself as to like, you know, what, you know, what your point of view really is and what your lifestyle and the way that you entertain and the way that you, um, you know, I think I, I always, I always find that when I, when I go into spaces that feel aspirational for a person and it's not really a sense of who they are, um, I feel like the space feels a little bit less energetic or less honest or less, um, I don't know, I just think it loses a little bit of something. I think that when you go into a space and someone is really connected with it, they're really excited about it, they love what they've done, they use it, they live in it. it it's such an expression of like, sort of the way, you know, when you go to someone's house and they're, they love to cook and they walk you through the way they laid their kitchen out and the piece of the things that they've chosen and they're really excited about it and they're using it and they get such joy out of it. I just think to me that's ultimately what we're designing. I mean, whether it's a hotel room that you absolutely love, or a restaurant that you go to and you think is fabulous, or um, or it's your your bedroom, or your living room, or your family room, where you where you where you spend time with the people that you love. I just think that to me is, you know, if you're really using the space and you're enjoying it, and it kind of tells your story, it, it has sort of it it has your sort of narrative, you know, everywhere and your blueprint. Or sorry, I mean your sort of your 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 DNA kind of every you know the idea of that is really amazing because it tells a story and I love walking into a space that I know who you are where you're from where you're going where you you know and and, and you get a sense of them that you know I think that's really important and I think also when you look at brands you know hotel brands or restaurant when you get a real sense. Uh, you walk into a restaurant and you know what the food experience is going to be based on the look and feel of the restaurant and the music and just the way that it's you know laid out. I think that's really successful design because it's telling a story and you're connecting with it and and you know there's there's you know it, it there's just it's uh, there's an honesty and an openness to that kind of design and I think if you can bring that into your home or that to me that's that would be I would think that sort of the, that's a great, great example of really, really good design. Right. Has your opinion of design changed at all over your career? I, no, I don't think it's changed at all. I think actually my, my design, uh, my opinion of design and my appreciation of design and my, it's really more evolved than changed. Um, I mean, I think that as I get older and as I, I see more and know more and do more, I think that I have a, you know, I, I think I, it, it evolves. But I think my philosophy has always been the same. I love the idea that design is for everybody. And I love the idea that we all have access to it at some level. And I love the idea of design being something that isn't presented in a pretentious way. It's pretent presented in a very kind of fair way and an interesting way. And it's more about ideas than it is about the expense. And I love that... Um, I really am very interested in design as just, you know, um, the sort of the, 
the raw interest of just space, design, beauty, function. Um, and so I think for me, it's always been about that. And, um, and I think that, you know, that's why I think for me, going from television to real, you know, sort of brick and mortar design with clients um, was always very easy for me because my, my inspiration was always the, whether it was the, the, the guy on Queer Eye or the girl on Dress My Nest or it was, or it's my clients or it's my own house and it's really the inspiration for my house was living you know, on, on, on the lake and having that experience. Mm -hmm. And so I find that thing that really becomes sort of the North Star for the project and I really follow it and I, and I really use that as my, you know, my sort of, you know, it's my springboard and it answers so many of the questions and it keeps it really grounded in what it's really about. Mm -hmm. And so um, I would say that it has not really changed. It's definitely evolved, um, but it's always been really just about, you know, smart, good, um, timeless design that feels very fresh and that feels very much about sort of the way we live right now. Right. What was the best piece of advice you've been given during your career? That I, would, that I was given? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know if I ever listened to it, but um, I would say no. My, I, you know, I'd say the best advice that I was given in my career You know, I think, uh, you know, I, I remember Albert Hadley saying to me, you know, um, remember, you know, you have to, um, you have to always have a surprise in, in your design. You always have to have something that is unexpected and that, you know, always makes people have to do a double take or think about or wonder why it's there or just something that is a little, um, you know, it's sort of compelling and a little odd or offbeat. And I, and I have to say, I think that advice has served me very well. I think that having that element, that surprise in design is something that it always, it is amazing to me how it always is the thing that people remember. Um, they may love the space, but that one quirky moment, it, people talk about. Now, in my house, in, in my lake house, for example, I just saw it up there, that's what made me think of it. But in my lake house, I have, a, um, I have an eagle console in my furniture line. And, um, and it's an eagle, it's a big eagle with a, a top. And, and, and it was inspired by this eagle that was outside of my house. Um, years ago, I had another lake house and I was in the morning, I woke up and had a cup of coffee and I went outside and there's this eagle flying around and I'm watching and it was kind of early and I'm like, one eyeball open and I'm standing there and the eagle flies around and dips down and breaks the hole in the ice, takes a fish and flies away. And I was just like, holy shit, wow, that's pretty amazing. I couldn't believe it and it was kind of all happened so quickly. And I seen myself, you know, the eagle and he was like an endangered species and the whole thing and now here they are flying over my house. A few days later I see the president, you know, on news and he walks out of a room, two eagle consoles. So I end up putting one in my furniture line it is still the thing that people talk about. It's a really quirky thing to have in your furniture line. And the idea was I took sort of Andy Warhol and this sort of iconic piece of furniture and merged them together. So it comes in every color. It's really fun. It's kind of a quirky thing. So it is something that people, Alexa, to, we, were have, we were having drinks last night and she was asking me, is that still in your furniture line? And I was like, it's still there. So people really remember it. And it's not my favorite piece of furniture I've ever designed. It's not the most dynamic piece of furniture I've ever designed, but it definitely stands out. Interestingly, I also used it in my lake house. I took the top off of it, put soapstone on it, and put a sink in it and made it into the vanity in my powder room. So people go through the whole house and there's, you know, interesting things or whatever and artwork or whatever. And the one thing that they are like, whenever anyone who's been at my house once and someone new comes over, they go, oh my God, have you seen, you have to see the vanity in the powder room. It's crazy, it's the funniest thing. And so it's interesting how those quirky like little surprises, whether it's in your, you know, whether it's in something like the furniture line or it's in my house, that one thing definitely catches more um, interest than, um, you know, than some of the most beautiful, elegant things that I just absolutely love and, you know, could not live without. So it's interesting. I do think that that was a great piece of advice is that always have something that's a surprise, that's a little offbeat, that's fun, 
and that maybe I think what I think what Albert was trying to say is that something that makes all of the serious stuff it kind of brings a little levity into the moment or it just it, it kind of puts people at ease and and it makes it fun and it's quirky and it's fun to talk about so I do think that that um, is a great piece of advice that has served me well I yeah, know I think it's an amazing piece of advice for sure um, I actually wanted to talk to you a little bit about your product line yeah. um, and you answered a little bit you know in terms of inspiration of that particular piece yeah. but just in terms of your approach in general to creating these products where do you start well you know it's okay so interestingly I was I was doing a video earlier with Tom um, and I can't think of his last name he's uh, the guy that I was interviewing with Tom uh, he has a television show uh, that's here in in Toronto so we're 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 shooting and he was asking me we were looking at one of the vendors that is a, a tr uh, it's a Canadian based company that's doing sort of modern design but it's there's an earthiness to it um, and yet it's very modern it's warm and there's something kind of timeless about it but it also feels very of the moment so and he, I was describing the furniture and and I said you know it's interesting because I'm not from very far away from, you know, from here. I'm from sort of the same region on the U.S. side. And, and so the thing is, is that I said, you know, I said, I have a real appreciation for things that, um, that have that kind of balance, that have that sort of earthiness, um, but at the same time uh, are sort of modern and sophisticated, but also kind of warm and inviting at the same time. So I really feel that that's my... That's really what I love, and I think that playing to that balance. So if you're looking at an, if you're developing a, sp a, a, a space that you're doing a, a home in the city, in Toronto, in New York, whatever, whatever city that you're that you're designing in, you know, you want it, you want to change. You can change the balance, you know, but but that balance is really important. And if you take that same client and you bring them to their house, either on the ocean or a lake or in the country or on a farm or wherever or in a suburb. You, you just change the balance, but you use that same kind of balancing act and the idea of bringing in things that are, that are, that are earthy and grounded and feel real and natural um, and have sort of an organic reference. And then you're bringing in sort of the machine made that's very sophisticated, very polished, v more refined, and you're balancing them. And I think that that's, um, you know, that's, that's kind of my, that's my, uh, I guess my balancing act. <laughs> Jam. I like it. I like it. Um, so we're going to do some audience questions if that's okay. I just have yes. one last question for you. Okay. Um, so you've done books, you've got your product lines, you've done TV. What's next for you? Um, if well, you have any I, ideas. I would say, you know, I, we're, at, we're in the infancy of, you know, I, I've, uh, my furniture line came out in 2008 eight or nine, and I think not a great time to bring a furniture line out, but we did really well and we grew it slowly, and uh, it's doing really well, which is awesome, and, um, but, but it, we're still in our infancy, so we're still growing that, and that's growing. The Tom Felicia Home Collection, we have, we're now working on bedding, we're doing, uh, we have curtain, we're doing window treatments now, we have curtain hardware, we have artwork, we do have artwork currently, we have textiles with Kravit, we have furniture with Vanguard, we're now doing furniture for Kravit as well. So we're, we're really growing that division. And so that's still in its early stages as far as I see it. Um, so that's continuing to move forward. Um, Tom Felicia Inc., we're, we're doing commercial and residential, which I really love. And the company has grown a lot in the last, you know, f two or three or four years. Um, I take a little bit of time off from television so I could really focus on it. And, um, and then I opened another company called Sedgwick and Brattle, which is a showroom in New York that is a uh, that represents our furniture uh, to the trade so it's it's been a very um, so that's been a lot happening and now of course books and so I think we're going to continue to sort of do what we're doing and just continue to grow what we're doing and try to grow at a quick enough pace that it feels like things are happening but not too fast that it feels you know it's a, it's more of a long-term goal uh, is what in terms of building the brand um, and that's, I think, what I'm going to be doing. I, I'm also, I just, I'm talking to some networks right now about uh, some new shows, but I really want the new shows to be something that's really about design, that's really about great design, and that really supports really kind of what you guys are doing here with um, IDS, because it's the same idea. And I just think this is so interesting, and I think that 10 years ago when I started you know, or 12 years ago when I started working in television and talking about design, there wasn't as much 
knowledge about design right. uh, as there is now for in, you know in in you know in, in people that are not in the design business. Right. So I think that there 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 will be a place for a show that really is uh, more substantive in design and can be uh, really interesting and fun and friendly and approachable, but is really design driven. So that's one of the things that that we're working on. Great, excellent. We're looking forward to it. Well, thank you. So, if anybody has any questions in the audience, I'm going to come down with the microphone. That was so interesting that you interned with Parrish Hadley, and Sister Parrish was Jackie Kennedy's yes. a yes. designer. So, I'm wondering, was there a, a legacy? Was there uh, a feeling that you learned from those glory days? that you as a young intern have brought into your life into design because she was, Sister Parrish was beyond the beyond. Yes. And uh, I'd like to hear more about that. Well, yes, absolutely. First, I, I would say um, it was a really amazing opportunity to work with Parrish Hadley. I mean, that's, that was, you know, one of New York's kind of really venerable firms, you know, in the city. And um, it was a great experience. And I was, um, I, I, I really got a lot out of that. And it was a wonderful springboard for me. And I loved having that kind of classic training uh, because uh, I just think it's, it's, it was really important for me in my career. Um, however, I would say that, you know, I think that taking that and then working for Robert Metzger, which was a totally different thing, and then working for Jeffrey Bill Huber, which was another thing. It really helped me sort of refine and understand what my, th my aesthetic was. Um, but, but Albert was a real gentleman, um, Albert Hadley of Parrish Hadley, and he was really great about reaching out to the next generation. Interestingly, one, there's a young girl, and she could even be here, her, um, but I can't see, I really can't see the audience that well because of the lights. But she went to my high school, and she's here and she's working at the event and she said that um, she studied interior design because I inspired her at a young age when she, you know, when, when she was um, through, through television and I thought that's really amazing, you know, and so, you know, there are those moments where I, I gave her my card and said, you know, she's just graduating from design school, I said if you maybe want to come work with us or, you know, do an internship, I'm not sure what your, what your next steps are, but, you know, the idea I think is really important for us as designers um, that have these amazing opportunities to sort of make sure that the next generation of designers is also being supported and given and given these opportunities because I was really lucky that Albert and sister uh, you know brought me in uh, as an intern and then in, uh, hired me back as you know uh, out of college and now there's a book being written about the firm and the, I'm included in that and so it's just you know it's been a really great thing and I, I, a lot of people that I've worked with or for have somehow come out of that, you know, that, that, that really amazing um, institution, I guess. So uh, it, was, it was very important. And I really am very, very appreciative of, you know, of having that experience. So, it, and it definitely informs a lot of the way that I, um, you know, the way that I sort of work in my own office with, with um, you know, with my team and also with young people coming in and interning with us or, you know, and anything like that, because I understand how important it is, because I know how, what it meant to me. So thank you. That was a really interesting question. Mm -hmm. Any other Anyone questions? else? Questions? Okay. Yes. What was that? Do I, oh, I'm sorry, did you say, I, do I still do small apartments? Uh, yeah, you know, we do, we actually, I mean, we generally do small, smaller spaces, we generally do for clients uh, who either their kids or they have pied a terre or something. We end up doing projects uh, for a, a family, so we'll do a, a few different things, and that's generally what we do. Um, it, it's a little difficult sometimes to do small spaces, only because when you can only take on, let's say you can only take on 15 residential projects at any time, because some of them are starting, some of them are in progress, and some of them are completing. Um, it's hard to take on a small project when you're you know competing with two other projects that are m more uh, that are of, of bigger scale but we do we absolutely do and it it also depends on a lot to do with um you know we interview clients as well as them interviewing us we sit down and we're trying to find a really great 
you know, that, that great um, kind of synergy. And we do projects, I've done, I do traditional work, I do historical work, I do modern work, I do, gla I mean, we're doing very, very modern houses and transitional, so we do a lot of different things. Um, and I'm open to, I'm always looking for, you know, interesting new people, clients, and projects. So we're, we're open to it, but I would say it's a little difficult as a business model sometimes. Anyone else questions? Actually, this kind of g speaks to that as well. Do yes. you ever feel like there's, you've just bitten off more than you can chew? You seem really, really busy. Like between I, all the different yes. projects, that you, I, take you know on? what I I I will I will tell you you know I'm I'm uh, I'm I guess I'm one of those people I really like I like to have a lot going on and I'm comfortable with that um, sometimes to a fault but um, but I have a really amazing team of people that I work with um, and Laura Beck Rosalie I mean there's a whole there's like a we have a we have my, we have like a really great I mean there's only there's 20 of us but but we're but it's a great group and we have a really tight office where we're actually I mean I was getting emails or text messages yesterday around this time and they were all like in the lobby and they were just, you know taking pictures like group <laughs> pictures and they were going to get margaritas because they're trying to plan how we're all going to get to one to Kate's wedding and so it's really nice when you have that kind of environment because you get a, you can get a lot done when you're somehow when you're that close with everybody it there's something about the syner the energy that you can get a lot done it is amazing and everyone we're kind of really committed you know just before i was coming up on stage laura back you know who's probably at dinner with her husband is calling me to make sure that i'm where i'm supposed to be so they're they're the, you know th when you have that kind of commitment and connection I think it's amazing what you can what you can do. So I, I've been very fortunate to have uh, to have a, a really great group of people around me, and it hasn't always been that way. It took a really long time to get to a point where where it was like you know kind of this amazing group. Any, Any other, other questions? questions? Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. It made oh, there's one before you. Okay. Hi there. Hi. Hi, IDS. I can Toronto. see your blue scarf, oh, but that's it. But it's really pretty. <laughs> I just want to say IDS and Toronto loves you. I wish you'd come back here in Toronto more often. Oh, well, thank Please. you. I appreciate come. it. Well, I have to tell Stay you, I really, come I really do like, often I would love to do to that. I'd be happy to do that. And I really do think that Toronto is a great, it's a fabulous city. I was, I was on the phone. The first, the, I arrived, I think it was Thursday night. The, I, j I got here just in the nick of time to come to the party before it stopped. And I, I was coming into the city, and I literally was like, gosh, I'm like, you know, I haven't been to Toronto in like three or maybe it was four years. I can't remember. The I think it was three and a half or four years ago. And I thought to myself, it seems like there's, like, I must have been really intoxicated the last time I was here because I don't remember all these buildings. And they said they weren't here. And I said, that's a lot. That's an ambitious construction schedule. It, the city looked, I mean, it's amazing. And it really is. The city is very vibrant. So cool. It's amazing. Um, back more often. I would love that. But, you know, will you let, just so you know, there's a gentleman right there with red on that wanted, had a question. I thought I, I could see his red. Yes, a question. Um, yes. What should I prepare if I want to work for you? <laughs> Wait, what was that? I say, uh, what should I prepare if I want to work for you? Um, okay, that's a great, okay. Um, well, first of all, I'll give you my info. I'll give you my card. Um, yeah. And you would reach out to Laura Beck in my office. And she's really awesome. Um, but, I, you know, I think what you should, I, I mean, I, depending on what you want to do, if you want to do um, architectural interior design or if you want to do uh, interior decoration, like, because that's kind of how we break up the office a little bit into kind of groups. We have sort of teams. Um, so really sort of figuring out what you want to focus on is one of the things that would be really great. But um, kind of walking us through your portfolio and any work experience that you have, whether it's interior design or not. Um, and then really just getting a sense of your enthusiasm and your energy. And, you know, really what we do is we, you know, we, we're looking for people that are just passionate about design, are excited about um, what they do, and then also connect with the office. And those are really, the, those are probably the fundamental things that we look for. But we are also looking for, of course, technical skills, you know, 
having um, what would you know different types of uh, you know programs that that you work with that that you're proficient in we have so we have some people in the office that are really great at doing renderings or really great at you know the certain things that they do that we kind of we tap into people and move them around for projects so um, it's uh, I would say it's just it, it, we wear we all kind of wear a lot of hats so it's really finding people that have that ability to kind of you know, kind of move around and I think it's kind of the next wave of like what's happening in the world of business because I think years ago people worked for big, big companies that you kind of had one role or you were specific. Today it feels like the small company is there's, it's becoming such a, a big part of the workforce that people have these kind of, you, you're, you're doing a lot of different things within, you know, within one office. So I think having that energy and that enthusiasm that's really what we look for. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We have another question right here. Just curious about online blogs or websites yes. or favorite books, um, anything in that nature. Okay. So I'm in a level. I'm in a give, I am literally. <laughs> I, I'm so low tech. It's scary. And so I literally walked into my office. This was not too long ago. It was about um, about eight months ago. And I said. I said, Rosalie, Laura, I go, guys, my computer, I can't get it to do anything. It's totally broken. And they walked in, they looked at it, and they were like, Tom, it's off. <laughs> so <laughs> so to give you, that gives you a little window into sort of where I am in sort of the world of social media and technology. However, my office is, they're amazing, and that's something that they're really interested in. So now they're, they're really trying to get me to Instagram, um, to just to Instagram on my own. And so uh, someone, someone at the show was like, you know, I was just Facebooking with you the other day. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I said, I hate to tell you this, but it wasn't me. That was Laura Beck in my office. And I was like, she's a doll. <laughs> but so anyways, I would say that, um, yes, we a uh, favorite. Um, I don't have a favorite blog. <laughs> I don't. I, and that's going back to your question. I, and I and I go to blog fest and I I know about every I know about every blog that's out there but I really am very bad at I, I'm not a return customer I just kind of go I look at it I think it's amazing and we talk about should we do one and then we're we're interviewing someone right now to come in and help us develop all of that those areas for us for Sedgwick and Brattle and for Tom Felicia um, but it's just it's something that it's just so far from my wheelhouse but um, but it is it's kind of an embarrassment it's like my <laughs> It's not my shiny moment, I have to admit. But thank you. <laughs> so we probably have time for one more question, if it's OK. What uh, one piece of advice would you offer new design students that yeah. are uh, thinking of going into interior design? Got it. I would say for sure, I would say the first thing is you must, 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 must do an internship, without a doubt, somehow, whether it's, you know, and it should be a paid internship. And it should be, um, and you should do it because it will help you as a young designer understand what you want to do in an office. Because there's, you know, design is not just that one thing anymore. There's so many layers to it. I have people, we have people doing product design, we have people doing architecture, architectural interiors, um, decorating, shopping. So figuring out what it is that you want to do in interior design is really important. And I think the internship is really, it's like a great, great opportunity to get that sort of moving. I would also say that, you know, really be thoughtful about what you have to understand from the technology standpoint. I, it's very important to have those technical skills, but it's really important to have those people skills and be able to communicate your ideas. And it's really important to use, um, use the internet as a resource, but not as your only as your only way of connecting with product. You have to be out there. You have to really, you have to go out and touch, feel, shop, look, sit on, and really understand um, the product. Because uh, that is one thing that I think, you know, is when I was when I was starting out in design, we really didn't have as much uh, information online. You know, there was a little bit, it was just starting. But now you can get everything online. You, you sort of, you don't really have to connect with the product. So going to events like this, shopping at stores, knowing the people at the stores, having someone that's your salesperson and talking to them, knowing them, touching everything that they make, understanding it, 
the weight, the, 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 the material, you know, it, that's really important. And, and then being able to communicate that in a way to the client that they feel confident that you're, you're selling them on something that, not, that you haven't just seen in a picture of, but you've seen it, you've touched it. And I think that that's really important to make sure that you have that, that sort of nicely balanced uh, approach to design and sort of the business of design. Because at the end of the day, it is a business. You know, I mean, it's a creative, it's a creative uh, you know, industry, but it's a creative business. So um, I think having, having that is really important. Great. Well, thank you very much, Tom. Thank you. This was really fun. Thanks, guys. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it. And thanks for inviting me to IDS. It was great.